Did you know that there's a secret fruit in the game called the meme fruit? And this is how you get the dark blade without paying any robux. These are some of the craziest blocks fruit secrets that you must know. Okay, so the first shocking fact is that blocks fruit is actually on an alien planet and it's not on Earth. And the proof I have for this is that if you go to any high location on the map and you turn your graphics to the lowest they could possibly be, and then you equip something like the Kilo Fruits umbrella ability or the Love Fruits bird ability, and then you fly up straight into the sky, after a while the world underneath you should start de-rendering. Once that happens, you can actually see the Earth underneath the Blocks Fruits map. And this is definite proof that Blocks Fruits is not located on Earth because I don't think there can be two Earths in the same place. But then again, it's just a pretty weird glitch, but who knows, there could be two Earths in the same place. I guess we'll never find out. Okay, so this is a shocking fact that I'm pretty sure that a lot of you new players should definitely not know about. And that is that the Blocks Fruits game actually used to not be called Blocks Fruits. It used to be called Blocks Peas. And the reason for this is to make it more similar to the One Piece anime. But I'm pretty sure Blocks Fruits got way more popular than the devs intended for it to be. And because of this, they had to change it due to copyright. And since the majority of the game has to do with fruits, putting fruits in name is not that bad of an idea. Okay, so this is something that I guarantee you guys did not know. In the olden days of Blocks Fruits, the sky jump ability that everybody knows and loves used to not actually be limited to 10 to 12 jumps. You could actually use it an infinite amount of times, making it one of the most overpowered abilities in the game for how little money you had to pay for it. And the devs instantly realized how overpowered this was because someone from the literal seafloor could jump all the way up to upper sky if they had enough energy. So they decided to patch it in literally the next update. But overall, I'm really happy they changed it because it would just be really annoying for PvP fights if you're fighting someone that they literally decided to sky jump to outer space really annoying. Okay, so I know a lot of you are wondering what the rarest fighting style is in Blocks Fruits, and a lot of you might say God Human, but hear me out, guys. There's actually one that's a little bit more rare than that, and it's the combat fighting style, the first fighting style everybody gets when they enter Blocks Fruits. And this fighting style literally has no logo, and it just has two basic skills, and they're pretty bad if you ask me. But the reason it's rare is that once you buy a different fighting style, you actually cannot get the default combat style back, making it really rare. Like, when was the last time you saw a second or third C player with this fighting style? Exactly. Exactly, never, because literally nobody has it. But I guess that makes new players have one of the rarest fighting styles in the game. Imagine you could trade fighting styles, that would be kind of cool. You could literally get the combat style back. Okay, so this next shocking fact is about guns in Blocks Fruits. Everybody knows that guns are not that strong compared to other things like swords, combat styles, and fruits. But did you know that in the olden days of Blocks Fruits, they actually used to be way more useless? And the reason for that is that guns actually had no ability skills, making them kind of useless. So the only ability you have is the passive left ability and it doesn't even do that much damage. Like literally you couldn't increase any mastery to unlock any new skills. You just had the basic abilities. And in the old block fruits I'm not even sure why people bought any guns in the first place. Because literally if they don't have any observation breaking skills then what's the point of actually using guns? I guess you can use them to aggro NPCs to group them up and have an easier time grinding them but then again what's the point of buying them if they have absolutely no skills? Just pretty useless if you ask me. Okay so the next shocking fact is chess. Exactly you heard me. You can literally play chess inside Blocks Fruits. And the chess is a very small easter egg that was developed by a user named Norprez. And the place you can play chess is underneath the cafe next to the Awakenings Expert, the Titles Expert, and the Color Specialist. And there's another one located at the mansion on the third seat. You can earn the title of Mastermind by beating somebody in a chess match. You obviously need two people to start a game of chess or else you won't be able to move any pieces on the board. And this game might be a little bit more difficult for mobile players because it's not recommended to play if you're on mobile. It's pretty hard to move the pieces and Everybody knows that in chess, if you move the wrong pieces, you've pretty much lost the game. And a lot of you might not know this, but in chess, there's actually a thing called castling. It's when you move your king and the rook at the same time. And this is actually a mechanic that was coded into the Blocks Fruits game. Overall, playing chess in Blocks Fruits is just a really cool Easter egg. Okay, so back in the olden days of Blocks Fruits, did you know that the Fruit Notify Game Pass actually did not exist in the game? And if you wanted to try and find fruits, you have to go manually looking for them. You have no idea how long that would take. And keep in mind, a fruit does despawn after a certain amount of time, so it's very unlikely that you're gonna check every place. That's why I'm so happy that they added the fruit notifier in the game. This makes grinding spawned in fruits much easier for literally anyone, as long as they buy the game pass. But if you can't buy the game pass, don't worry, there's a lot of methods. Just go watch my video about it. Okay, so everybody knows in Blocks Fruits that if you actually want to unlock the upper sky place, you need to have the sky jump ability equipped. And the reason for this is that you need to be able to jump from lower sky to the upper sky temple. But did you know there's actually a way to do this even if you don't have that ability? 
ability. And the way you do this is to get a friend with the portal fruit. And if your friend has the portal fruit, then they can just directly teleport you into upper sky. And then once they do that, you just have to walk in the portal behind them. And boom, you're in upper sky without having sky jump. And I don't really recommend this to anyone because sky jump is actually a really crucial ability that you need for literally almost every place in the game. Okay, so everybody knows about the quite unique features with the rubber fruit. It takes absolutely no damage from guns and all electric attacks. But did you know that in the olden days of blocks fruits, the rubber fruit actually used to take damage from things like the electric fighting style and the rumble fruit, which is pretty weird if you ask me, because rubber actually does not conduct electricity, which means that it shouldn't take damage from any of those attacks. But even in the olden days, the devs knew that rubber takes absolutely no damage to guns, just like in the anime One Piece. But I guess the devs figure out later on, after they added the rumble fruit, that they should probably give the rubber fruit an immunity to electric attacks as well, because it makes the game way more realistic. And overall, it's just a pretty cool addition. Okay, so everybody knows about the ice castle in the second scene in Blocks Fruits. And everybody knows that there's countless rooms in the castle, but you can't actually enter the rooms. But did you know that there's actually a way to glitch inside of these rooms using your flash step ability? So all you have to do is turn your camera to face a certain way, have your shift lock enabled, and once you can see behind the wall, all you have to do is teleport through it. Once you glitch inside these rooms, you're gonna notice that these aren't actually rooms. It's just a weird glitched area inside the castle that I don't think the devs wanted you to see. There's pretty much nothing here. There isn't any rooms. There's nowhere to sit down. It's kind of just like the inside of the building. It doesn't have that much practical use, but it would have been really cool if the devs decided to add a secret NPC in this place or something like that. Kind of just a wasted opportunity if you ask me. Okay, so everybody knows that there's a total of 35 fruits in the game currently. There's 20 natural fruits, 10 elemental fruits, and 5 beast type fruits. But did you know that when Blast Fruits actually launched, there were only a total of 12 fruits in the game, which means they've added a butt ton of fruits. When the game was launched, the only fruits that were in the game were the bomb, spike, chop, smoke, rubber, flame, ice, dark, light, magma, quake, and buddha fruit. And since we're on the topic of fruits, did you know that there's actually four fruits that are kind of not in the game? This is the door, string, soul, and meme fruit. I'm pretty sure most of you watching have already heard about the door, string, and soul. These are just fruits that have kind of been reworked. The soul fruit was changed into the spirit fruit due to copyright. The string fruit was changed into the spider fruit, also because of copyright. And the door fruit was changed into the portal fruit. And you guessed it, also because of copyright. Man, copyright really messed up a lot of these fruits, huh? But the meme fruit is something that I'm guessing a lot of you have not heard about. And the reason for that is the only people that can use this are admins. It literally has one ability which is called traffic code and it just insta-kills anybody that's on your team which makes it really suit its name of a meme fruit. But going back, when Blocks Fruits first launched, there wasn't that much content in the game. I mean, there wasn't even a second C. So these many fruits in the game made it really easy to enjoy it back then. But obviously, the latest version of Blocks Fruits is the best. Okay, so everybody knows that Dark Blade is a really good sword in Blocks Fruits. But did you know that there's actually some ways to get it without paying money for the game pass because the game pass literally costs a total of 15 dollars which is 1200 robux the second way you can get the dark blade is by just simply being gifted the game pass the third way is being traded the game pass and the fourth way is actually a really unique way and this is by getting the brazil cube that can be summoned by rip underscore indra and the way this works is that once you touch the brazil cube a boss named mihawk should spawn in and if you defeat this boss you have a hundred percent chance of receiving the dark blade but you kind of need rip indra in your game to do that and i don't think a lot of you watching have that kind of luck and the fifth way to get it is by defeating an admin by defeating an admin there's a small chance that you'll get it but then again these methods aren't really that good because the chances of an admin being in your game are really low and a lot of you might be wondering about the mihawk boss how powerful is he exactly well it's entirely unknown because admins usually don't go into public servers and technically the boss is not a boss or an npc it's an admin using a disguise but everyone knows that any npc with the dark blade is really overpowered and pretty hard to find again so if you somehow have the luck of meeting an admin in your game and they spawn in mihawk just prepare yourself for a really difficult battle okay so everybody knows about the double money game pass in blocks fruits it's a really useful game pass and it literally doubles the money that you get from everything making your money grinding life 10 times easier well but i'm guessing one thing you didn't know is that in the olden days of blocks fruits this game pass actually did not work as intended when you killed any npcs the double money did not work but it still did work on other things like chess and i guess this was just kind of a scam for players that bought the game pass because I'm pretty sure they were wondering why they were not getting their money doubled when they were killing NPCs. Because getting money by killing NPCs is one of the major money farming methods in Blocks Fruits and it's something that you literally have to do if you want to complete the game anyway. So it's better to just level up and grind money at the same time. Did you know that when Blocks Fruits first launched there were only 12 total fruits in the game and guns literally had no skills. This is the evolution of Blocks Fruits.
On January 16th, 2019, Bloxwitz was officially released to the public. The level cap during this time was literally just 300. When the game released, the first swords that were added were the Dark Blade, Saber, Bicento, Cutlass, Triple Katana, Dual Katana, Katana, Warden Sword, Pipe, Dual Headed Blade, Shark Saw, and Iron Mace. And there were only a total of 12 fruits, and this was the Bomb, Spike, Chop, Smoke, Rubber, Flame, Ice, Dark, Light, Magma, Quake, and Buddha. And there were literally only two fighting styles just the basic combat fighting style that everybody gets when you join the game and dark step and the overall accessories include the vice admiral's coat tomoe ring swordsman hat pink coat and usopp's hat and the guns in the game were the slingshot musket flintlock refined slingshot refined flintlock and cannon and moving on to update 2 this is when blockfoots got its second update on june 16th 2019 they increased the level cap to 500 they added a new sword which was the soul cane they added two new fruits the phoenix and spring they added a new gun the refined musket they added a new fighting style which is the electric fighting style they added a new island which was the magma island and they added a new npc to help you remove your blocks fruit which everyone knows is located behind the prison and they also released a rubber rework making the fruit a little bit better they increased the mastery capacity made code accessories bigger and added a light sword so now the light fruit also had a passive ability moving on to update 3 which was literally just released like 15 days later they increased the level cap to 650 they added a trident and pole they added the string fruit and the rumble fruit they added the bazooka and they added underwater cities upper sky and the coliseum they also added a new ability which is observation which is everybody's favorite ability because it literally lets you dodge people they also buffed a few fruits like the rubber light and phoenix and this update had a lot of fixes moving on to update 3.5 this was a pretty small update the new things added were the graybeard boss the Bicento v2 and just a few minor fixes Moving on to update 4, which was released on the 7th of July 2019, they added a Dark Blade V2, they added the Sand Fruit, and they had a butt ton of fixes. They also buffed the Sand, Phoenix, and Light Fruit. And they also added a way to spend your stat points faster, so you didn't just have to spend one at a time. Moving on to update 5, which was released on July 14th, 2019, they increased the level capacity to 750, they added the final island of the first sea, the Fountain City, and they added the Gravity Fruit. They also added a new accessory which was the cool shades and one of the best fighting styles to this day water kung fu they also buffed the light fruit once again along with the flame fruit and they added some slight nerves to the dark blade moving on to update 6 which happened on july 28th 2019 and this update was majorly focused around the pvp system fruit balancing cruise and bounty and honor they revamped a bunch of fruits the flame ice light and magma and they also added crews so pirates above the level of 300 can create a new crew and you can invite up to 15 players to be in that crew and this is when they added the honor system to marines because then they have something like the pirates to keep them grinding and they finally gave skills to every single gun in the game because before this update guns literally had no skills you just had the simple passive ability and a bunch of other minor bug fixes moving on to update 7 this was released on august 11 2019 they added the paw fruit to the game they balanced a bunch of fruits and they buffed the saber v2 making it the best sword suited towards pvp to this day moving on to update 8 this was the new world update it was a really big one because it literally added the second c to the game the max level was now raised to 1000 and they added a bunch of new islands the kingdom of rose the green zone the dark arena the graveyard and usopp's island and some other small remote islands they also added the barrier fruit they added a long sword gravity cane the sadi the shisui the wado and they also added two new guns which was the acidum rifle which you could get by completing the raid and the kabucha which you can buy from usopp they also added a new fighting style which was Dragon's Breath, and they added a bunch of new accessories. The black spiky coat, the chopper, the top hat, the warrior helmet, the dark coat, and swan glasses. They also added two new boats, which was the flower ship and the swan ship, and a bunch of new bosses, which was the diamond boss, the Jeremy boss, Vegeta. They added sea beasts to the game and the dawn swan boss in the second sea. And they also added race progression, which means you can upgrade your race to the next level. They also added a way for people with the bounty requirement or honor requirement to be able to spawn in sea beasts. And overall, this was just a really huge update because they literally added a whole new C. Moving on to update 9, this was the anti-copyright update and they had to change a bunch of stuff. This update came out on December 25th, 2019. The final update of the year Blox Roots came out. The max level capacity was raised to 1100. They added the snow mountains, they added the dough fruit, they added the superhuman fighting style, they added the true triple katana, and they changed a lot of visual aspects and content along with the names. One of the examples of this was the gum gum fruit was changed into the rubber 
Superfruit, and a bunch of other names were changed to avoid copyright. Moving on to update 10, this update focused on the new hot and cold island, as well as balancing a bunch of other things. The new level capacity was 1250. Obviously, the new island that was added was the hot and cold. They added the control fruit to the game, making it the best fruit in the game at the time. They added the Jite sword and the Coco sword. They also added a zebra cap accessory and a new boss, which was the smoke admiral. They also nerfed the dough fruit a bit because it was really overpowered even back in the day. And they increased the bounty slash honor that someone could get to 20 million. And for the MOAB players out there, they made boats a little bit easier to control. Moving on to update 12, this is the awakenings update, and this focused around the awakening of fruits. The first fruits in the game that you could awaken were the flame, ice, and quake, and they all came out in this update. They added a new currency called fragments, which replaced rare artifacts. And unlike artifacts, the currency saves between servers, so it gave players the ability to save them up more. And the dark blade was also changed around a bit, it was given a new model, which looks a little bit better than its old one. And they had a buttload of bug fixes and balance changes. And I'm not gonna name them here because it's way too many. Moving on to update 12, this was the Halloween update and this was released on October 21st. The max level cap was raised to 1350, they added a light fruit awakening, a dark fruit awakening, they added a midnight blade, a bizarre rifle, and they also added a three new accessories which was the ghoul mask, the blue spiky coat, and the red spiky coat. And they also added a title system and you could get titles for completing various things in game. They added the ghoul race and they also nerfed the quake v2 a bit. Moving on to update 13 this was the christmas update and it came out on december 23rd 2020 the level cap was raised to 1450 they added the string fruit to the game and this is where they added a string awakening and they also added the dragon fruit to the game they added a new fighting style which was death step and everyone knows you can just upgrade dark step to get it they added a new legendary sword ren goku and this one you could get by defeating the awakened ice admiral and opening the chest they added a new island the ice castle and frost mountain two new drops the hidden key and the library key and they also added a bunch of christmas npcs they added santa claus the magic elf the boss fruit dealer's cousin and the greedy elf and they also fixed this glitch with the control fruit which would just crash servers then moving on to the first update of 2021 this update came out on March 20th and the new level cap was raised to 1525. With this update, they obviously disabled the Christmas event because Christmas was long gone by then. They added a new island called the Forgotten Island, which was the final island for the second sea. They added a Rumble Awakening, they added Sharkman Karate, and they added a new race, which was the Cyborg Race. They added the Pole V2 and the Dragon Trident, and a bunch of new titles. They also added a bunch of other minor updates. The rest of them were just a bunch of bug fixes. Moving on to the next update, and this one was really huge it added the third c into the game the level cap was raised to 2000 and a bunch of new islands were added the floating turtle the hydra island port town the great tree and the castle on the sea they added the electric claw fighting style to the game and a bunch of new swords the yama tushida dark dagger cavander twin hooks and a butt ton of accessories as well the lee pilot helmet musketeer hat jaw shield pretty helmet valkyrie helmet bandana hunter cape and they also added a new gun which was the serpent bow they also added added seven new fruits the venom fruit the spin fruit the door fruit the kilo fruit the diamond fruit the love fruit and the falcon fruit and two new awakenings as well the magma and the buddha so now people could grind a lot easier with this update since it was the third seed they also added observation v2 so for you pvp experts out there this helped them a ton and the rest of them were just balance updates now moving on to update 16 this was the halloween update for 2021 that level cap was increased to 2100 they added the halloween event by collecting bones they added a halloween npc which was the death king and the community liked him so much that he actually stayed even after the event ended they added a new island which was the haunted castle and two new fruits the shadow and revive pretty fitting if you ask me they also added a new sword which was the hollow scythe a new fighting style which was dragon talon and to get this you had to upgrade your dragon's breath a bunch of new accessories which was the bear ears the golden sun hat and the holy crown and a few other titles they also buffed the control fruit a bit because it was a bit bad at the time moving on to update 7 17. This was the Christmas update for 2021. The level cap was increased to 2200. They added back Santa Claus, the magic elf, and this time they added the greedy elf. But this guy you could only access it in the second and third sea. They added two new islands, which was the peanut island and ice cream land. They added a new fruit, which was a soul. This would be later changed to the spirit fruit because of copyright. They also added an awakening for the sand fruit and a new buddy sword that you would get from defeating a certain boss. Moving on to update 
1.5. This update mostly focused on the Christmas related content reworks and other bug fixes. The level capacity was increased to 2450, which is the max level to this day. And you might be wondering, when was this update actually released? This was released on the 26th of December 2022. So the game literally went almost a year without any updates. And in this update, it was obviously another Christmas event. They literally had two Christmas events in a row. Pretty funny if you ask me. And for this one, they added a new island, the North Pole, which you could only reach in the first and second sea, and a new event that happens every hour at the center of the North Pole Island. They added the new Blizzard Fruit, the new Accessory Holiday Cloak, and the Candy Cane Island. They also reworked a bunch of fruits and some other minor bug fixes. And moving on to the first update of 2023. This was the Race V4 update. And for this one, pretty suffocating. Explanatory, they added a V4 for every single race in the game. The human, angel, rabbit, shark, cyborg, and ghoul. And next up is the latest event to this day, which was a Valentine's event. They reworked the love fruit, making it a lot better to use. And they added two new Valentine's NPCs that you could talk to and get a bunch of stuff from them. They also changed the string fruit into the spider fruit because of copyright and a bunch of other minor bug fixes. This is the fastest way to farm levels in the game. And this accessory makes your grinding life 10 times easier. This is how you get to level 2450 in one week. Okay, so starting off, this is the number one mistake that you do not want to make in blocks fruits, and it's one that I personally made myself. Not knowing the difference between fruits that are meant for PvP and meant for grinding. And obviously, since this is a video to get to level 2450, you're gonna want to use some grinding fruits, not PvP ones. Let's compare two different types of fruits. The magma fruit, which is a grinding fruit, and the dough fruit, which is a PvP fruit. The magma fruit costs a total of 850,000 belly, and it's a rare fruit. It's also an elemental fruit, which means enemies need hockey to hit you. The magma fruit also does have an awakening, which costs a total of 14,500 fragments. And most of its abilities have an area of damage, which means they can do damage to multiple targets at the same time. And once the magma fruit is awakened, it's the second best fruit in the game for grinding. But on the other hand, we have a dough, which is a fruit which is more targeted to PvP. It's a mythical fruit, making it a lot harder to get. It costs a total of 2,800,000 belly. And it also does have an awakening, which costs a total of 18,500 fragments. But overall, most of the abilities of this fruit are actually suited towards PvP, which means for grinding, it's not as good as the magma fruit, even though this fruit is overall a much better fruit in my opinion. But if you want to purely focus on your levels and grinding up to a higher one, then you definitely want to get your hands on the magma fruit. Okay, so on that note, let's talk about some grinding fruits that are really good for beginner players to get. And these three fruits are the magma fruit, the ice fruit, and the light fruit. The magma fruit is really good for grinding, the literal second best like I mentioned before, but the reason the ice fruit and the light fruit are really good for grinding is a bit of a different reason to the magma. The light and ice fruit both get passive abilities. For the ice fruit, you get an ice trident, and for the light fruit, you get a light sword. And the cool thing about these passive abilities is that you can actually use them without any cooldown, which means unlike an ability or a skill, you don't need to wait for a reload time. You can just kind of spam it. And it's not only their passive ability that makes them good for grinding, it's the fact that they're both elemental fruit. For the ice fruit, it costs a total of 350,000 belly or 750 robots from the block fruit dealer. And this one does have an awakening, but you won't be able to awaken it in the first scene. But the normal version is still really good for grinding. And next, moving on to the life fruit, this one costs a total of 650,000 belly. And the life fruit also does have an awakening, but like I said with the ice, you won't actually need this for the first scene. And overall, these three fruits, the magma, ice, and light, are just really good for grinding in the first scene. So if you get your hands on them early, make sure you do not switch to a different fruit. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna be telling you a little trick that's gonna make your leveling life a little bit easier. So everybody knows the last quest of the first sea, and this is the Fountain City quest. After you're done killing the NPC, 99% of players will finish the quest and actually head to the second sea, and immediately start doing the first quest there. But did you know the first quest of the second sea is actually a pretty bad quest because the enemies are spaced really far apart from each other. So what you actually want to do is instead of heading into the second sea after you unlock it, you actually want to go back and keep doing the final quest that you have there. I mean, not the boss quest, but the one with the group NPC. And the reason that this quest is actually better than the other ones is because the enemies are way closer together, which means they're way easier to group up and fight. Unlike the other one. In the long run, it's definitely worth to grind the ones in Fountain City. And once you get all the XP for the second seed quest from the first seed, then you can head over to the second seed. And then you can move on to the next quest, which is in the second area of the first island. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be telling you about a really crucial ability that I recommend everybody watching to buy. But most of you should already have this. And I'm talking about Hockey. Hockey is an ability that can be purchased from the ability teacher for a total of 25,000 belly. And I recommend everybody, as soon as you get 25,000 belly, immediately head to the 
Snow Island and into the cave and buy it from the ability teacher. Hockey is a really cheap, easily obtainable and useful, so I recommend you to definitely get this. To activate and deactivate your hockey, press J, but I think you should keep it on the whole time because there are no energy drawbacks, so it's really overpowered. The hockey leveling system has a total of 6 stages. First up we got stage 0, and this one covers the half of your arms, and this increases your non-food attacks by 1.1, which isn't really that much. And then moving on to stage 1, this way it covers your full arms, and this multiplies your non-food attacks and your food attacks by 1.1, and you need a total of 4000 XP for this. Moving on to stage 2, what this does is it covers your full torso, along with your arms, and this ability makes you take 9% less damage from any attack that lands on you. So basically it acts as an extra defense. Moving on to stage 3, this is where it covers your full arms, torso and head. It negates all damage taken by 17%, which is a huge step up from the other one. And then moving on to stage 4, this is where it covers your full arms, torso, head and half of your legs. And this stage reduces all the damage you take by 24%, which is a huge amount of damage reduction. And then we got stage 5, which is the final stage. And this one reduces all damage taken by 30%. And obviously, once you fully max out your hockey, you will keep all the buffs from each stage. There's also some cool colors you can buy for it, so you should definitely get a hold of this ability. So moving on, I got another trick for people that are in the second C. And I'm talking about the Swan Pirates. And you might be wondering why the Swan Pirates are such a good trick. It's about the area they're located and how close to each other they spawn. It's next to this bridge over here in the Kingdom of Rose area too. And the reason these guys are so good to grind is because they're located so close to each other, making it extremely easy to group up. And you never have to wait for them to respawn. And this location in the second C is literally every player's best friend. And it's literally a level farm if you know what you're doing. Moving on, I'm going to be telling you about the most overpowered grinding fruit in the whole of blocks fruits and i'm obviously talking about the buddha fruit and the reason the buddha fruit is extremely overpowered when it comes to grinding is because of its long range when you use its first transform ability enemies you're fighting literally cannot hit you back which means you're just doing damage to them and they can't do anything to you the buddha fruit costs a total of 1,200,000 belly or 1,650 robux it's a legendary fruit and obviously it's a beast type fruit the whole awakening costs a total of 14,500 fragments but the first ability only costs 500 fragments to awaken so i recommend everybody to do that the fruit that's second to this is the magma and that's also a really decent fruit, but this fruit is literally the best. Next up, I'm gonna be telling you about something that's really underrated when it comes to grinding, and I'm talking about accessories. Accessories are a really subtle way to improve your grinding. I mean, they give pretty minor buffs, but over time, those buffs could be really overpowered. And the accessory I'm gonna be telling you guys about is the ghoul mask, and this accessory is something that you should use if you have the Buddha fruit and if you're grinding with it. And it can be bought from El Pero, who's located on the cursed ship in the second sea. It only costs 50 ectoplasm, so by the time you're done with your quest that you should be able to buy it. Gives you plus 500 energy, 10% life leech on melee attacks against players. It gives you a 2.5 life leech on melee attacks against NPCs. And that's not all. It also increases your movement speed by a total of 35%, making you a really hard target to hit when you're running around. Overall, a really decent accessory, and I 100% recommend this to people with the Buddha fruit, and just people that are grinding in general. Next up is something that's really easy to do, and there's literally no reason to not do it. And I'm talking about codes. Codes are a really easy way to increasing the speed at which you grind. And the reason for that is a lot of the codes in the game are actually double XP codes. But all you have to do to find these codes is just go into Google or YouTube and just search up Roblox Blocks Fruits codes. And it should show you every active code in the game. And after that, all you gotta do is simply enter in every single code. But I will tell you guys that you should probably enter the code in one at a time because you're literally not gonna be grinding every second of Block Fruits. Sometimes you're walking around just to buy guns and do other stuff. Okay, so now this is something that's really crucial to leveling up. And I'm talking about your grinding styles. There's a lot of different ways to grind in the game. Although grinding with Buddha is the best one, not all people can get the Buddha fruit right off the bat, so some people might be grinding with swords or even fighting styles. But whatever style you choose, I recommend you stick to it and you do not change your fighting style. And the reason for that is it's way better to have your stats all on three different categories. So for example, if you have a total of 99 stat points and you're a sword grinder, then you should put 33 on sword, 33 on defense, and 33 on melee. And there's also some people out there that grind with guns, but I wouldn't really recommend that to a lot of you guys. But either way, if you are a gun main, then stick to being a gun main until you can reset your stats. Another thing that's pretty good to do is to server hop bosses. And the reason you want to do this is because the boss quest gives you way more XP than the regular quest from the quest giver. And they usually take lesser time to do as well. And the way you server hop them is to click the servers button on the top left and simply just join a new server after you're done killing the boss. And then you just want to repeat this step a bunch of times until you're done with the boss quest fully. And you can also use it to just grind drops from bosses if you're looking for a specific drop. <laughs> No, no, no. 
everybody knows and loves NPCs and Blox Fruits. There's a total of four different type of NPCs. There's the shop NPCs, the Blox Fruit dealer, the Blox Fruit gotcha, the malicious NPCs. These are people that usually sell you accessories, the quest NPCs, and then there's enemy NPCs. And these are the NPCs that you fight to gain your levels in Blox Fruit. So at the first island of the game, the Pirate Starter Island, you can find the Blox Fruit dealer. It sells your fruit. Sometimes they're in stock and sometimes they're not. Then we got the Sword Dealer, and this is where most people buy their first item in the game. You can purchase the Cutlass or Katana from this guy. Then you have the Set Home Point person, and this guy is literally on every single island in Blocks Fruits. You just set your spawn point at that island. Then we got the Marine Recruiter. If you click on him, then you can switch your side to a Marine. Then we got the Boat Dealer, and this guy is also on every single island. He spawns in a boat. And then we got the Luxury Boat Dealer, and for this one, if you have the Faster Boats Game Pass, then you can spawn boats from this guy. Then we got the Marine Star Island, and then we have the exact same NPC as the other island but instead of a marine recruiter you got a pirate recruiter at this island moving on to the next island we got middletown and for this one we have the weapons dealer you can buy the slingshot musket and flintlock three starter guns that most people buy then we got the aura editor pretty simple you can just change the stages of your aura then we got robot mega and this guy just does a bunch of random stuff then we got the experienced captain and by talking to this guy you can enter the second sea if you fit the requirements next island is the jungle and at this one we got the blocks fruit gotcha I think everyone knows this one, but if you talk to him, he'll give you a random physical food. Next up is the Pirate Village, and for this one, we got the Sword Dealer of the West. Sells you two swords, the Dual Katana and the Iron Maze. Then we got the Dark Step Teacher, and if you talk to him, you can purchase the Dark Step Fighting Style if you have enough belly. Then we got the Rich Man, and this guy is a part of the quest to get to the second scene. And moving on to the desert, we have an NPC called Hassan, and he sells you a Swordsman Hat that gives you plus 10% damage with your sword. Next up, moving on to the Frozen Village, you have the Sword Dealer of the East, and this guy sells you the Triple Katana and the Pirate. Then we got the abilities teacher and this is a really crucial NPC that everyone needs to talk to. He sells you three different abilities, hockey, sky jump, and flash step. And you definitely need these if you want to complete the game. Then we got the sick man and this guy's also a part of the quest to get into the second C. Then we got the doghouse Indra NPC. And this NPC also just tells you a bunch of random stuff. But you also get a hint for the dark blade V2. Moving on to Marine Fortress, you got the Advanced Weapon Dealer here. He sells you the Refined Slingshot, the Refined Flintlock, and a Cannon. Next island is Skylands, and here you can find the Master Sword Dealer. He sells you the Dual Headed Blade and the Besento. Then we got the Mad Scientist, who's actually not located at Skylands, but really close to it. And this guy sells you the Electric Fighting Style. And at the very top, which is Upper Sky, here you can find the Instinct Teacher. And this guy sells you Observation, which is a really crucial ability to finishing the game. Moving on to the prison, we have the Blocks Fruit Remover, and if you talk to him, then he can literally remove your Blocks Fruit. Not sure why anyone would want to do this, though. Moving on to the Magma Village, you have the Living Skeleton NPC, and he sells you the Soul King, and he also looks a bit creepy. Next up is the Underwater City, you'll find the Water Kung Fu Teacher, and just like the name says, you can buy the Water Kung Fu ability from it. Moving on, we got Fountain City, and even though this is the final island of the first sea, there aren't really any relevant NPCs here, except for the quest givers. Alright, so moving on to the second sea, in the Kingdom of Rose, you can find the Cyborg NPC, and this Cyborg NPC sells you a flower ship, literally one of the NPCs in the games that sells you a boat. Next up is Trevor, and Trevor is a part of the quest to get to the third sea, and once you speak to him, you have to trade him a fruit that's worth more than 1 million belly, once you meet the requirement. Next up is Sabi, and you can buy the Dragon's Breath fighting style, which you can later upgrade to Dragon Talon. Next is the Mysterious Entity, and this NPC was previously known as Wenlock Toad Over Heaven. Once you talk to this NPC, you can choose which version of your fruit to have, whether you want to have it in the Unawakened version or the Awakened version. Moving on to the Colosseum, we have King Redhead, and is an NPC that was added in Update 15. And you can only talk to him once you're level 1500 or higher. And once you accept his quest, you'll be teleported to an island to fight Rip Indra, which is a part of the quest to go to the third sea. Next up is the Cafe, and here there are a bunch of NPCs. First one is Tort. If you give him 3000 fragments, then you'll change your race to another random one. And talking to this NPC is the only way to change your race in the game without Robux. Next up is the Blocks with Gacha, and he's pretty simple you just talk to him and he gives you a random physical fruit then we have the bouncer slash honor expert and this person tells you how much extra damage you do to players depending on what your bounty is the next npc is called bartillo and he gives you a quest which is one of the requirements to upgrade your race to v2 
Then we got the Awakenings Expert, and he lets you change the level of your Fruits Awakening. Next up, we got the Color Specialist, and this person lets you change what color your aura is. Then we got the Title Specialist, and this guy lets you change what title you have and what color the title is. Then we got the Nerd, and this is by far one of the most useful NPCs. If you talk to him while having an accessory equipped it, he tells you exactly what that accessory gives you, because there's no other way to find out. And on the bridge, there's an NPC called Plokester, and if you give him 2,500 fragments, he resets all your stat points. Players mostly use this for changing their playstyle. Moving on to the green zone, we got the Alchemist, and this person gives you the quest to awaken your race to V2. Then we got the Mysterious Man NPC, and this is an NPC all the way at the top of the green zone. He will sell you the true triple katana if you have the requirements for it. And then we got Mr. Captain, it takes you into the third seat, but obviously you need to have the quest completed along with the requirements. Moving on to the graveyard, we have the crew captain, it sells crew slots, but you can only use this if you're a captain of a crew. And for each crew slot, you have to pay 2,000 fragments to unlock one more. Then we got Rip underscore Indra, let you switch the skin of your Dark Blade. You can switch it to its default variation or the Slayer skin variation. Moving on to the Snow Mountains, this is actually a pretty special place because you can get the superhuman fighting style from the martial arts teacher, and it's one of the best in the whole game. Moving on to the Hot and Cold Island, we have an Ultra Medic, and this NPC sells you a microchip in exchange for 1,000 fragments. Then we got the Mysterious Scientist, and you can buy a microchip to start your raid with. Moving on to the Cursed Ship, we actually got a bunch of special NPCs here. We got the El Rodolf NPC, and what this guy does is he sells you a Bizarre Rifle for 25 Ectoplasm. Then we got the L Admin NPC who sells you the Midnight Blade for 100 Ectoplasm. Moving on, we got the L Pero NPC and he sells you a Ghoul Mask for 50 Ectoplasm. And this is pretty good for grinding with the Buddha Fruit, so I recommend you guys to get it. Next up is the Experiment. And if you talk to him for 100 Ectoplasm and a Hellfire Torch, which you can get from killing the Cursed Captain, this NPC will change your race to Ghoul. Next up is the Gunishima, and if you talk to this NPC, he'll tell you the amount of ectoplasm you have in your inventory, but he's pretty useless because you can literally just check that yourself. Moving on to the Ice Castle, we got an NPC called Fiona the Reformed, and what this NPC does is it sells you the Death Step fighting style, which is a pretty powerful fighting style for grinding CBs. Moving on to the final island of the second sea, we got Digrock the Sharkman, and this guy sells you the Sharkman Karate, if you have the requirements, of course. The most powerful fighting style for grinding in the whole game. Alright, moving on to the third sea, the first island port town, and here is the experienced captain, and if you talk to him, he takes you back to the second sea. And of course, we got the blocks for theater, like every first island on a new sea. Then we got the master of auras, which lets you change the level of aura that you want to be shown. Then we got Hydra Island, and here we got the arena trainer NPC. It gives you the quest for a training dummy, which is a pretty good way to get your hands on 200 fragments. But you can only equip the quest every hour. Then we got the great tree island, and here we got the crew captain. The same NPC as the one in the second sea. Then we got the mysterious force NPC, and this helps you unlock your race V4. Moving on to the floating turtle island, we got got the Crypt Master, he will open the door to the dual katana puzzle room. But keep in mind you have to be at least level 2200 to start this quest. Then we got the Citizen and helps you start your quest for your Instinct V2, but you have to be at least level 1800 to do this one. Then we got the Ancient Monk, teaches you the God Human fighting style. The strongest fighting style for PvP in the whole of Blocked Fruit. But you need literally every single other fighting style in the game to be at level 300 to get this one. Then we got the previous hero NPC and if you talk to him, he'll let you do a quest to get the Electric Claw fighting style. Then we got the Hungry Man NPC, the exact same one that's on the first C. Then we got the Horn Man NPC, and this NPC is a quest to get the Rainbow Aura color. And you have to defeat these bosses in order to get it. The Stone Boss, the Island Empress, the Kilo Admiral, Captain Elephant, and the Beautiful Pirate. Moving on to the Haunted Castle Island, we have the Death King. And if you talk to him, he'll literally let you roll a bunch of different random surprises as long as you have 50 bones to give him. Next up, we got the Uzoth NPC, and he gives you the Dragon Talon fighting style, if you have the requirements. Fire Essence, 3 million belly, and 5,000 fragments. Pretty costly if you ask me. Then we got the Weird Machine NPC, and he lets you do the puzzle to unlocking the Soul Guitar, which is the most powerful gun in Block Fruits, but then again, it's a gun. Then we got the Ghost NPC, who's also a part of the puzzle to unlocking the Soul Guitar. Then we got the Gravestone NPC, pretty weird, a literal talking gravestone. And with this NPC, you have a chance of getting some pretty decent stuff. Moving on to the Sea of Treats, 
we have the sick scientist. The sick scientist is an NPC whose sole purpose is literally for just unlocking the Phoenix Raid. It cannot be spoken to unless the user has a 400 mastery on their Phoenix Raid. If you fit those requirements, then they'll let you buy an advanced microchip, which costs 1,000 fragments, and then you can do the Phoenix Raid with that. Next up is the cake scientist, and this is the scientist you talk to if you want to awaken your Gofu. Then we got Drip Mama, and he tells you to kill 500 NPCs on the island to awaken a portal into the Do King's world. Then we got a sweet crafter who's on the exact same island. When you give this NPC PC a total of 10 conjured cocoa with and a god's chalice, they'll give you a sweet chalice. And this is what you use to turn the cake prince into the dough king. Moving on to the castle on the sea, you have a buttload of NPCs on this island, but most of them you've already met before. You got the Lunovan NPC, which is actually a new NPC, and you have to defeat five elite pirates to interact with this NPC. And once you do that, you'll receive a pretty helmet accessory. Next up is Plockster, and I think you guys know what he does already. Then we got the butler NPC, he gives you hints on how to get observation V2. Then we got Taka Give you the jaw shield after you kill five players in a public server with the player hunter quest active. Then we got the ore editor, Fiona, and the water kung fu teacher, dark step teacher, mad scientist, Dyrock the shark man, martial arts teacher, Zabi, elite hunter. Then we got the player hunter NPC, which gives you a quest for killing a random player on the server. And each quest that's completed, you will get a total of 20,000 belly and 50 million XP. Then we got the remove blocks fruit NPC, it removes your blocks fruit. Now, that was a lot of NPCs on just one island. Moving on to the the Temple of Time, we got the Mysterious Force NPC, and this lets you unlock your race to V4. Then we got the Ancient One NPC, and this is also an NPC to awaken your race to V4. Then we got the Mirage Island, which is a secret island that many people don't know about. This is an island that spawns as a random sea event, but it only happens on the third sea. We have one of the most powerful NPCs in the game, the Advanced Fruit Dealer. He has a way higher chance of spawning in a bunch of different fruits. Like the regular Fruit Dealer just has to have a minimum of three fruits in stock, but for the Advanced Fruit Dealer, that's Seven. And you also have a higher chance of legendary fruits being in stock. He also restocks every two hours compared to the normal four hour restock time of the normal blocks fruit dealer. This is how you glitch underneath the blocks fruits map to find the craziest places. And this is how you travel on water without taking any damage. These are nine block fruit skills that you must learn. Next up is a really simple glitch, and it's by far the easiest glitch on this list to learn. So this glitch, basically what it does is it just lets you walk on water. And you might be wondering, how can I actually walk on water without the help of the ice fruit or the magma fruit? Well, it's not exactly walking on water, but it does prevent you from taking damage. So what you can do is that when you're actually on water, you can hold your space bar. And if you do that, you'll actually just start splash jumping on top of the water, and you will not drown. And if you do this and use the dash ability, you can get to some pretty distant places without taking taking any damage. But if you do end up using the dash ability, then it's not a 100% guarantee that you won't take damage because sometimes if you use your dash when your character is too low, then you kind of dash into the water and you take a bit of damage. And another thing I should mention with this glitch is that if you are on low health while using it, you can actually stand in place and hold your space bar. That way you're guaranteed to take no damage. Overall, a really good ability and you can use this if someone knocks you into the water in a PvP fight. Okay, so this first skill that you definitely need to learn, especially if you're trying to do some PvP, I'm talking about combos. So the first combo, I'm going to be telling you guys is by using the Cursed Dual Katana. And the requirements for this is having Electric Claw, the Portal Fruit, obviously the Cursed Dual Katana. So the way you start off this combo is using the C ability of the Electric Claw, and then using the Z ability of the Portal Fruit, and then using the Z ability of the Cursed Dual Katana, then using the X ability of the Cursed Dual Katana, and using the Z ability of Electric Claw. But when you use it, you gotta hold it. And then finally, to finish off the combo, you have to use the X ability of the Electric Claw. Now I'm going to be telling you about a combo that's pretty easy to do, and this one's with the light fruit. So first up, you gotta use the superhuman C ability, the spiky trident's X ability, the loves Z, X, C, and V ability, then use the superhuman Z ability. Now let's talk about some combos that are pretty difficult to do. So this one's using the awakened sand fruit. The first ability you use is the sand's X ability, then you use the sand's V ability, then you use the sand's C ability, then you use dragon talon X ability, dragon talon Z ability, and sand Z ability. And this should deal a butt ton of damage to the user. Okay, so now let's talk about some awakened dough combos. And the awakened dough fruit is regarded as one of the best PvP fruits in the whole Blocks Fruits community. So you're definitely going to want to learn some combos for this. So simply just have to use the X ability, then use the V ability, and then use the C ability. 
really simple. And next is a medium to hard combo. And for this one, you gotta use the Electric Claw C ability, the Doze X ability, the Electric Claw Z ability, the Doze C ability, Curse Dual Katana Z ability, and you gotta aim down for this one. Then use the Curse Dual Katana's X ability and also aim down for this one. Then use the Doze V ability, the Electric Claw Z ability, and the Electric Claw's X ability to finish it off. And this one's actually super difficult to escape and it's almost guaranteed to kill your opponent. Overall, those are some pretty simple combos. You can also search up combos on YouTube if you want to learn some more advanced ones. Next up, I'm going to be telling you guys about a flash step glitch. And some of you might already know this one, but it's super useful and I recommend everybody watching to learn it because it doesn't take that much time. So the way this glitch works is it actually lets you teleport through some specific walls that are on the map. And the way you do it is you simply have to walk up to a wall, but it has to be thin enough. And once you do that, you have to angle your camera correctly and make sure you have shift lock enabled because if you don't, then this glitch will not work. Um, once you got your camera aimed properly, you can just kind of have to tilt it until you see the outside of the wall and then you just want to hit your flash step key. Boom, you should have just teleported through a wall. And you might be wondering, what can I actually use this for? Well, there's actually two things you can use this for. One of the things you can use it for is to just to get out of buildings faster, places like the cafe. And the second thing you can use it for is to glitch underneath the map. Yup, you heard that right. You can literally glitch underneath the map in some places with it. And overall, it's just a pretty decent glitch and fun to use sometimes. Next up, we got a really underrated skill, and it's something everybody should definitely learn, let alone master. And I'm talking about aim. Aim is obviously more specific for PvP because NPCs are, well, they're NPCs. When you're fighting against players, they move a lot more rapidly and frequently, so they're much harder to hit. And you definitely need good aim if you want to target your abilities at the players and not just at a brick wall. So there are actually three things that you can do to maximize your aim. First of all, you have to make sure that you're not lagging. If you are currently playing with lag, then I recommend you turn on fast mode because it does help quite a bit with that. And next up, pick the right sensitivity. This is something that you definitely have to do and it's very underlooked upon. And it could be the whole reason that your aim is bad in the first place. You can also use a variety of Roblox games or even install AimLab to practice your aim. Just remember that the better your aim is, the better you probably are at PvP. Okay, so this next one isn't actually a proper skill. It's just something that everyone should know in general. It's knowing where the proper NPCs are located. And the reason this will be helpful is because you don't waste a lot of time just wandering around the map searching for it. There are some major NPCs that you have to know, like the Bloxfruits Gotcha, the Sea Captains, and the Bloxfruit Dealer. The Sea Captains by far are the most important ones, and I recommend you guys learn where they are. To get into the second sea, you have to go to Middletown on the first sea, and he's located behind this house. For the second sea, you have to go to the docks in the green zone, and there you can teleport into the third sea. And on the third sea, the sea captain is at Port Town, the literal first island, so you can't really forget that. And the Bloxford Dealer is an NPC that's located at the Pirate Starter Island, the Marine Starter Island, Middletown, Dressrosa Rocks in the second sea, the cafe at the second sea, the mansion in the third sea, and Port Town on the third sea. And for the Bloxford Gotcha, he's located at the first sea in the jungle, he's located at the second sea in the cafe, and he's located at the third sea in the corner of the mansion, on the floating turtle. And these three NPCs are the most important NPCs in the game in my opinion, but there's also a bunch of other ones that I definitely recommend that you guys memorize, like the ones that sell you fighting styles. Me personally, I switch around my fighting styles quite a bit, but if you don't, then this isn't really that important, but I still recommend it to most people. Next up, we got a skill that's gonna help you not so much with players, but mostly against NPCs, and this is the dash hitting technique, and it's something that I've been using ever since I started playing Blocks Fruits. So the way you do it is as soon as you hit an enemy with a sword, combat style, or fruit, you instantly dash away. But it works a lot better with swords and combat styles, because with those, you actually get in the face of the NPC. Using fruits, you can mostly attack them from far away. What this skill lets you do is it basically lets you do damage to NPCs without really taking that much damage yourself. And if you master it, you won't take any damage at all. The reason they don't do damage to you is because NPCs actually have a bit of a delay on their attack. So if you can hit them and dash out before they even notice you're there, then this skill is going to help you a ton your leveling up journey. And if you master this skill, I recommend that you put a lot of your stat points onto your combat instead of your defense because you won't be taking that much damage. Okay, so this next one everybody knows about, but it's something that you definitely have to master if you want to gain a bunch of fruits in the game. I'm talking about trading. As the name tells you, you can basically just trade fruits and game passes with other players. There's currently only two places in the game where trading is available. One being at the cafe in the second sea, and the other one being at the mansion in the third sea. There almost are no real trading values to every fruit in the game, but all fruits are given a price by the developers. And this is how you decide a fruit's worth. So the trading process itself is pretty simple. You just gotta sit down on one of the chairs, and the person you 
you want to trade with has to just sit on the other chair. Then a trading menu opens up where you can choose which fruit to give and it also shows the worth of it. And what you actually need to master if you want to get better at trading is how much each fruit is actually secretly worth. And if you do this, you can actually kind of scam people sometimes because you can trade them stuff like the magma fruit for a gravity fruit. And the gravity fruit actually has a higher value than the magma fruit but in my opinion and I think everybody agrees with me when I say this, the magma fruit is definitely better than the gravity fruit. And the reason for that is because it has an awakening. And the gravity fruit doesn't really have an awakening so you can't actually maximize the potential of that fruit. Okay, so this next trick is something that I recommend everybody to do. It's being able to manage your money efficiently. And it might sound like a joke at first, like everybody knows what they want to buy. But there are some people that actually end up buying everything they see. And it's just knowing the right weapons to buy that decides your overall progress in the game. For example, if you buy the katana on the first island and you go over to the pirate village, there's a dual katana, which is literally twice as good as the normal katana. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy the katana. I recommend you to buy the katana because it helps you a lot at the start. But what I recommend that you guys do not do is buy the katana and the cutlass. They're both sold at the same location and it's just kind of a waste to buy both of them. Because first of all, you only need one. They do similar amounts of damage. And the second reason is that you're gonna buy a new one later anyway. And there's also a butt ton of items in the game that are completely useless and you literally have zero reason to buy. A huge example of this is guns. Like, majority of the reasons that people use guns in this game is for observation breaking abilities in PvP and guns being able to attract enemies' attention. So you don't really have a reason in this game to buy really powerful guns, I recommend just sticking to ones that are pretty low level and some observation breaking guns, but that comes later in the second and third C. The next skill that everybody in this game needs to learn is the difference between PvP fruits and grinding fruits. These are two different categories of fruits and one helps you level up much faster and the other type lets you fight players much better. And when you ask someone what the best fruit in the game is, people will often say the leopard or doe fruit. And that is technically correct, but it's also technically wrong. And the reason for this is that the doe and leopard fruits are the best fruits for PvP. They're literally unmatched. I don't think any other fruit even comes close to their skill level. But for most players, you don't actually want to be better at PvP. You want to be be better at grinding unless obviously you're a max level player and the best grinding fruit in the game that you want to buy is the buddha fruit the buddha fruit is really overpowered because of its long reach and the magma fruit is also another really good grinding fruit and i recommend this to a lot of first seed players there are also some fruits in the game that are pretty decent for grinding and also pretty decent for pvp but you mostly want to focus on one completely and to majority of the players watching this you want to get your hands on a grinding fruit because chances are if you're watching this video you are not max level and if you are well then you can get pretty much whatever fruit you want you've kind of completed the game if someone ever offers you a choice for a permanent fruit i completely recommend that you choose the buddha it's really good and it helps you a ton to level up this is how you level up 10 times faster and this is how you kill npcs without them being able to kill you these are 21 things you need to do when you start blocks fruit. Okay, so the first thing every new blocks fruit player should do is enter in a bunch of codes and the reason for this is that codes are really simple to use and that payback is amazing you got codes for a bunch of different things in this game you have codes for double xp you have codes for getting belly and you have one code that gives you a free stat refund but one thing i should mention with this tactic is that don't use every single double xp code as soon as you enter the game and the reason for that is because you're not always going to be grinding levels so you don't want to use them all as soon as you start the way i recommend you guys to do it is to enter in one of your double xp codes and then grind for the amount of time that your double xp code is there and then if you have to leave or get off roblox then you can do that but if you have more time to grind then enter in another double xp code and just continue this process till you use up all your double xp code this way you're only grinding while your double xp is active and you're not wasting even a single second of it and the stat refund codes obviously use them for stat refunds and the belly codes just use them if you want to buy something now i'm going to be telling you about the first quest that you have to get once you enter into blocks fruits so once you open up your blocks fruits you're going to be given two options either you start as a marine or you start as a pirate but 99 percent of players choose pirate and the reason for that is because pirates are just way cooler so once you spawn into the pirate starter island you want to head over to this npc right over here and then click on him and he gives you only one quest which is bandits all you gotta do is just pummel all of these bandits to death and you just keep repeating this until you unlock your next quest if you're a marine it's the exact same thing but you spawn in on a different island called the marine starter island and here when you talk to the quest giver he gives you a quest for marine trainees and the marine trainees have the exact same stats and levels as the bandits so they take the same amount of time to kill once you pummel all the trainees you just rinse and repeat until you're done with it then you just head over to the next island okay so next up for you beginners i'm gonna be telling you about the three different type of fruits and blocks fruits there's elemental fruits 
there's natural fruits and there's beast fruits. Ideally, what you want to aim for in the first seed to be good at grinding is an elemental fruit. And the reason these fruits are really good in the first seed is because unless an enemy has hockey, they can't actually do any damage to you. And there's a butt ton of players and NPCs in the first seed that don't have any hockey. And the fruit I recommend you guys to get is the light magma or ice fruit. These are pretty good fruits for grinding to start off with. The smoke and blizzard fruits are the only elemental fruits in the game with no awakening. And the only common elemental fruit is the smoke fruit, but it's still a really good fruit for grinding. Of course, the dough fruit is the most expensive elemental fruit, so if you get your hands on this early, just count yourself lucky. Overall, elemental fruits are the best category in my opinion, because the literal best PvP fruit in the game, the awakened dough, is an elemental fruit. But I doubt you're gonna be getting that in the first game. Okay, so now I'm gonna be telling you guys about the two beginner swords in blocks fruits that every beginner should get their hands on. So the first sword that most of you might already know is the katana. The katana is a common sword that can be bought for a total of 1,000 belly. And getting it is really easy. It's located on the pirate starter island and you can buy it from the sword dealer. It's located both at the pirate starter island and the marine starter island. And the NPC that sells it to you is the sword dealer. And since this is a sword, the katana has a total of two different skills. The first one only has a one master requirement. So as soon as you buy the sword, you literally get it. And the second one only has a 20 master requirement. So it's also pretty easy to get. The first ability is called quiet rush. And what this does is the user dashes forward dealing a bunch of slashes to the enemy. And the second one is air slash and this one is pretty self-explanatory. You just shoot out a huge air slash dealing a bunch of damage to the enemy. Overall one of the best beginner swords in blocks fruits if not the best and for the price it's definitely worth it. Okay so next up moving on to the cut list. This is a very similar sword to the katana. It also costs 1000 belly and you can buy it from the sword dealer. And the abilities are literally the exact same thing. You have quiet rush with the one mastery requirement and the air slash with the 20 mastery requirement. Overall I'm not really sure about the differences between these swords. They might just be retextures. So it's up to you which one you want to buy. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be telling you about a beginner secret that not a lot of players talk about. And I'm talking about the Fountain City quest. So the Fountain City is the final island on the first sea. And you're not actually supposed to go to it until you get the quest. But there's a pretty cool trick you can do before you even get that quest. And that is as soon as you spawn and head over to the Fountain City. Then all you have to do is glitch an enemy behind the wall. And then just do a bunch of damage to them. And just keep hitting them with your combat style until they die. And you might be scared thinking that you might die. But there's actually a pretty cool glitch in block fruits where if you glitch an enemy behind a wall you can actually do damage to them without them being able to do any damage to you and this is really overpowered since this npc gives you a butt ton of xp so if you do this a bunch of times you should literally get 50 levels but it does take a huge amount of time to kill them so i recommend that you guys only kill a few of them and not too many because then it'll take too long and the levels you get won't even be worth it next up is another trick that's going to help you a ton when you're farming levels and i'm talking about the compass the compass isn't actually a hundred percent accurate when it comes to leveling up really fast the compass just shows you the next quest that's available for you to unlock but it doesn't show you the best one to do to gain levels and an example of this is the pirate village the first quest you get at the pirate village are the pirates and they're really close to each other and pretty easy to group up but the second quest is brutes and they're really far away from the quest giver and they're super spaced out which means even if you unlock the brute quest you shouldn't do it because with the amount of time it takes to walk to each brute and kill them you can do the pirate quest way faster in a bunch of time because they're way closer to each other even though the brute quest gives you more xp and money you can finish around three pirate quests in the time you do two boot quests just because of how bad the boot quest is okay, so moving on i'm gonna be telling you how to upgrade your stats properly as a pure beginner as soon as you start off the game you don't want to upgrade three of your stats evenly like i've mentioned in my previous videos you actually just want to pour all your stats into your melee damage and the reason you want to do this is because you don't actually need a ton of defense when you start off you already have 100 health and the npcs don't do that much damage and the reason you want to put all of it into your melee is because you want to just dish out as much damage as possible and the only time you should start upgrading your sword or defense stats is when you buy your first sword or when you actually start dying to the damage from the NPCs. That's when you want to start upgrading them. If you're not dying to other NPCs, just don't even bother upgrading your defense stats because it literally doesn't matter too much. Okay, so this next trick is also something that's really important when you're completing your quest and it's to group up your enemies. And the reason you want to do this is if you have splash damage attacks, then you can deal damage to multiple NPCs because they're standing in the same place. So you don't need to waste unnecessary attacks to deal a bunch of extra damage when you can just use the same attack and deal the same amount of damage. And if you don't group up your enemies, then it just wastes a lot of time and damage, and you finish your quest way slower than if you group them up. So just make sure you're doing that. It's really easy to do and saves you a lot of time. Okay, so next up, this is a small bit of advice that you should probably know before you start playing the game, and it's that you take damage from the water. But that's only if you have a blocks fruit equipped in. And in my opinion, it's a really fair trade because blocks fruits help you a ton in the game. But for some reason, if you actually want your ability to swim over having a blocks fruit, then there's actually a way to remove your block fruit. All you have to do is head over to the prison on the first seat and at the back of it there should be an NPC that lets you remove
move your blocks through. But you have to pay him the hefty fee of 50,000 belly. And this amount of money might be kind of hard to get if you're still a first seed player. But it depends how far along you are. Okay, so now I'm going to be telling about a pretty important game mechanic that you can use once you start the game. And I'm talking about the dash function. Most of you should already know about this, but if you're a complete beginner, you might not. So this ability is pretty self-explanatory. You dash when you click the button Q. And there's actually a variety of things that this helps with. One of the uses is to get to places really fast. The other one is to dash above water so you don't actually take any damage while you're above it. And the third one is while fighting enemies. And I'm talking about PvP and against NPCs. So when you're in a PvP fight, you can use this ability to just dash around, be really unpredictable so your opponent just misses all of their shots. And when you're fighting NPCs, you can use this dash trick. So all you have to do is hit an NPC and really quickly dash away. It's not a 100% guarantee that you won't take any damage, but it's a really good way to ensure that you don't take a lot of damage. And the reason for that is NPCs actually take a moment to register that you're standing in front of them. So by the time they notice you're there, you can actually just hit them and instantly dash away. And there's some enemies that are really slow to attack, and this trick is really useful against them. Overall, a pretty decent trick, and just make sure you're using it everywhere you go. Okay, so now this is something that's gonna save you a bunch of time when you're just roaming around in blocks with. And I'm talking about setting your spawn barn. You should definitely be setting your spawn point at almost every island that you visit. And the reason for this is even if you go off the island later to maybe buy a fruit, or spin the blocks for gotcha, or anything else, you can just simply teleport to the island where your main quest is. And this is gonna save you a butt ton of time. But the only thing I will tell you guys is do not set your spawn point at the prison. And the reason for this is that there's actually no way to get off the prison unless you have a specific type of fruit. Because the prison doesn't have any boat spawns. So unless you have no devil fruit and you can literally swim in the water, I don't advise setting your spawn point there. It's kind of dumb. Okay, so this next trick I'm going to talk about is really simple and really easy to get done. It's chest grinding. And a lot of you new players watching might be wondering what chest grinding is. It's simply just walking around collecting every chest. And then once you've collected every single chest in the area that you're farming, instead of waiting for the chest to respawn again, you're just going to simply server hop and repeat the process. A place that I mentioned a lot of times in my videos is the temple on Upper Sky. So I'm going to be telling you about a different location that's really easy to get access to. It's the Pirate Village and a lot of beginners chest farm here. Get their hands on some really quick and easy cash. I'm not 100% sure where all the chests on the island are, but you can simply search up a video for that. But I do know that it's an excellent spot to farm chests for beginners. Okay, so this next technique is really simple to do if you're a beginner. All you have to do is get your hands on the smoke fruit. And everyone knows the smoke fruit is pretty easy to get. The reason you want the smoke fruit is because it's the cheapest and easiest to get elemental food in blocks fruits. It only costs 100,000 belly, and I know that's a bit expensive for beginners. You should be able to rack up the belly with the chest farming method from before. And once you get that, you should definitely buy this fruit. It's literally a common fruit, so it will be in stock in no time. And also, obviously, has elemental immunity, which means you won't take damage from enemies unless they have hockey. And the reason you want this specific fruit is because of its F ability, Smoke Bomber, and you only need a 10 mastery to unlock it. What this ability does is it turns the user into a smoke, gaining the flight ability, and you continuously drop smoke bombs from above you. And using this technique, you can grind enemies without them being able to do any damage to you. Just make sure you're flying high enough above them. If you do all of this, you should be able to just grind out a bunch of enemies. But I still think the ice, magma, or light fruit are better for the first seed. And the overall best grinding fruit in the game is the Buddha fruit. But as a beginner, you won't be getting that in any time. So the smoke fruit is definitely what you want to keep your eye on. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be telling you about two very important NPCs that you should be aware of once you start playing Blocks Fruits. The first one is the Blocks Fruit Dealer, and you cannot miss this NPC. It's an NPC that's located at the Pirate Starter Island and the Marine Starter Island, so you must have seen this. What the Blocks Fruit Dealer is, it's an NPC that will sell you the abilities of any Blocks Fruit. You just simply have to wait for the fruit to be in stock. And obviously, the more powerful fruits will have a way lower chance of being in stock, so you're gonna have to wait a lot longer if you want to get those. That's why I recommended the Smoke Fruit for the previous trick. Next up is the Blocks Fruit Gotcha, and what the Blocks Fruit Gotcha is, is an NPC that lets you spin for a random blocks fruit. But unlike the blocks fruit dealer, you actually get a physical version of this fruit, which means you can also drop it to someone else. The amount of money you have to pay for a spin on the blocks fruit gacha differs depending on what your level is. If you're level 50, you have to pay only 32,000 belly for a roll. But if you're the max level, then you have to pay 400,000 belly for just one roll. But the bad thing is that the fruits that you get are completely random. So you could get anything ranging from the leopard fruit to the kilo fruit. So roll at your own risk. This is how you glitch underneath the map and find the awakenings expert room. And this is a secret location that the devs did not want you to find. These are 24 hidden locations in Blocks Fruits. Okay, so the first place that you can actually secretly get to is the Awakenings place. And a lot of you might be thinking, obviously you can get to the Awakenings place. That's where you awaken your fruits. But what if I told you that there's actually a way to get here without even doing a raid or awakening any fruits? 
The way you do it is by glitching underneath the map in this specific spot and then you walk over here to this huge yellow box and then you have to kind of maneuver around it and then finally if you use your flash step you can actually glitch inside the place. And now what you've all been waiting for, if you talk to the NPC can you actually awaken the fruit that you have? Sadly you cannot and the reason for that is pretty obvious. You shouldn't be able to awaken fruits in the game without doing a raid that would just make this way too overpowered especially if everybody uses it. But it's still a pretty cool glitch that you can get in here in the first place. Okay, so the second place in this video that you can actually glitch into is inside the factory on the second C. And this is something that's actually really overpowered because you can get a short head start on people that are trying to do the factory raid. And the factory raid is a quite decent raid to do because it gives a fruit to a person that deals the most amount of damage. And everybody loves fruits. I mean, who doesn't? And the way you do this glitch is really similar to a lot of other glitches on this list. So what you do is you simply use the flash step glitch and boom, you're inside. But keep in mind, this glitch only gives you a short head start because once it starts everyone else can literally just walk in you're about like a total of four meters away from the entrance but it's still a pretty cool thing you can do literally show up early into the factory and who knows those four seconds might help you win the factory raid anyways on to the next one okay so the third location that you can actually glitch to is the cursed ship and a lot of you might be thinking obviously you can get to the cursed ship you literally just have to enter this portal well there's actually a way to get outside the cursed ship when you teleport to it and something else that a lot of you watching might not know is that the cursed ship is not actually inside the physical ship. Once you enter the teleporter, you actually get teleported 4,000 meters away from the land. Anyways, once you get inside the cursed ship, you just have to walk over to this exact wall over here. And then once you position your camera again, you should be able to flash the glitch out of it. And once you get there, you're going to notice that it's not actually a ship. It's just a collage of a bunch of random structures. And you can actually walk around here a bit, but just be careful not to touch the red stuff because it does start killing you and you don't really want to die. And when you head to the top of this place, it's actually a weird dome kind of thing, but it also does have red blocks on it so be careful when you head over there. Overall, a really useless glitch, but it's cool to know that this ship is actually 4,000 meters away from land. Okay, so next up, I got a location that I mentioned a butt ton of times in my previous videos, but I'm gonna mention it again for this one. It's the temple at Upper Skylands, and a lot of you think that you can't even enter this temple. Well, in reality, you can actually walk down one of these two corridors at the bottom of the temple, and then you can either glitch or break through the block here. And once you get inside, you'll have a total of eight chests waiting for you, and they'll give you a total of 8,000 bells. But this is mostly only good for first C players because, well, it's not that great amount of money if you're in the second C. But overall, this is still a really good hidden location and I didn't know about it until I did a bunch of research. So if you're in the first C, just make sure you head over here and get your hands on some free money. Okay, so this next hidden location is the raids area. And a lot of you might be thinking you already know where the raids area is. But what if I told you that there's actually two different places where you can do raids on the second C? Everyone knows about the first place where you just walk into the lab, enter a code, and head up the ladder but there's actually a different place on the second part of this island if you head over to the hot side of the hot and cold island you just have to climb up this rocky mountain over here and then there's actually a secret entrance and once you enter this place you can see a bunch of raid capsules and beforehand i actually thought that you could normally do raids here if you bought a raid from the raid scientist and brought it all the way over here but i guess i was wrong because when i tried to do the raid it actually didn't work so i'm not really sure how it works maybe you can only do specific kind of raids here because when i tried the flame raid it did not work and if it actually does not work as a raids place then it makes this location kind of useless okay so this next location is something that you guys might know about but it's a secret nevertheless and i'm talking about wenlock toad's house and a lot of you might be wondering who the heck is wenlock toad well if you head to the second sea at the cafe and collect this chest here and head down this ladder and walk over to the awakenings expert and if you look to the right side of him there's actually a door that appears to be closed but if you use the flash step glitch you can actually glitch inside this place and there's actually a secret sign on the right side and if you look Look closely at the sign, it should say something about Wedlock Toad, but I can't quite read all of it. And that's pretty much it. It's just kind of a shattered down small room, a very green room at that. It has like a bed and a bunch of chairs all over the place. It doesn't have much practical use, but it does tell you about Wedlock Toad, which I will be talking about later. Okay, so next up, we got the place with the Ice Admiral. And no, I'm not talking about the Awakened Ice Admiral. I'm talking about the original Ice Admiral. And the way you get to the Ice Admiral is by opening this door in the cave on the Snow Island. And there's actually no way to open this door if you don't meet the requirements with the quest. And there's no other way to open it. But there's actually a way to go through the door. And that is with the Flash Step Glitch. And this is something that any player can do as long as they have that ability. But if you do get inside, you'll notice that you actually cannot do any damage to the boss. But the boss can still do damage to you which is pretty unfair if you ask me. But other than that, there's no other practical use to this unless you just want to take damage from the boss for no reason. But you do you.
Okay, so moving on, I'm gonna now be showing you guys a secret location in the underwater city on the first scene. And to access this location, all you have to do is obviously go over to the underwater city and then walk over to this area where these NPCs spawn. And everyone knows that there's actually a barrier here that prevents you from crossing this area. And you couldn't go there even if you tried. But there's actually a pretty secret way to slip past this barrier. And all you have to do is nope, not try and jump over it. You just have to walk straight into it at a specific point. And then it'll just drop you down underneath the water. And once you walk a bit further, you're actually completely over the barrier. You couldn't get back in even if you tried. So your only real option to get back to the land is to drown in the water. Okay, so this next glitch spot is a really easy to access location and it's somewhere anybody can go. And it's at the first level of Skylands. And once you get up here after climbing the long ramp, you should notice this peculiar house over here. And there's actually something about this house that makes it different from all the other houses. You can actually glitch inside of this one. And once you do that, you will notice a letter on the floor. And once you click, it'll give you this short message. And what this letter is, is it's actually a part of the quest to get the Dark Blade V2. And only people that are actually doing the quest can see the full message of what it says. But other than that, it's just a pretty cool easter egg and it actually kind of looks like a love letter. I wonder who it's to. Okay, so next up we got another secret location that's on the first sea. And this is something most of you might know if you already have observation hockey. And I'm talking about the room with the saber expert. And if you're still in the first sea, you might still not know about this. It's a place that's actually underneath the jungle and you need to do a really long quest to unlock it. But there's actually a way to fight this boss without doing any of the quests. So when you normally do the quest, you actually get a key to open up this underground location. But if you got the flash step ability, then you can actually glitch into this spot when you're not supposed to be here. And then you can fight the Saber Expert boss like normal. But I'm not sure if he actually drops the weapon if you fight him illegally. The Saber Expert is a guy who's a level 200 boss. And he has a 100% chance of dropping the sword he has. So if you can do this illegally and get the sword, that's really overpowered. Next up, we also have another first C1, and this one a lot of you might not actually know. Everybody knows about houses and block boots, and 99% of the time you cannot enter these houses. But what if I told you that there's actually a house in the first seat that you can enter, and the place you find this house is at Middletown. All you have to do is take this exact route that I do, and then you look at the house with the green rooftop. And then all you have to do is simply walk into it, and boom, you've entered a house in block boots. In this house, you'll notice a bunch of random stuff, like posters on the wall and this small letter on the floor. There's actually two other NPCs standing next to you. One of them is the aura editor, which everyone already knows about. He lets you change how your aura looks on you. And then we got this NPC called Robot Mega. And the only reason this NPC is here is to give the sun quest to a player. And to accept this quest, you need to own the Dark Blade. And you need to be at least level 350 or higher. And what this quest does is it lets you unlock Dark Blade V2. Overall, a pretty secret spot that most people don't know about. Next up is another secret location on the first sea. And this one, I guarantee you, you don't know about. I'm talking about a place on the magma island and no it's not another house that you can walk into there's actually a secret location on the side of the volcano if you walk over to this exact spot you'll notice that the wall isn't actually a wall and you can walk straight through it and once you get into this small area you should find the living skeleton npc and this guy like he sounds is a literal living skeleton and he sells you a sword called the soul cane which costs a total of 750,000 belly the soul cane overall i think is a pretty decent sword it has a total of two abilities one called the soul beam and the other one called soul slashes for soul beam you need a 40 mastery and for soul slashes you need 120 mastery the first ability is kind of mid but the other one just spams a bunch of slashes in a close range it has good combo potential because the second ability locks the player but it has a really small hitbox so you need to make sure your aim is really good all right anyways let's go on to the next secret location Okay, so next up is another secret location in the jungle. And once again, this is something a lot of first seed players might not know about. If you head over to the stone area that's in the middle of the lake and you actually walk to the bottom floor, you'll notice there's actually a hole there. And if you walk into this hole, you'll notice there's a burning torch and a riddle on the wall. And what this does is it lets you start the quest to getting to the second sea. And the riddle will actually tell you to head over to the sand village and that's how you begin the quest. Overall, a pretty small secret and if you haven't already done the quest, you definitely did not know about this. Okay, so next up, we got a secret glitch location that looks really weird. And you can find it in the second sea, next to the Dawn Swan boss. If you head over to the arena where you fight the boss, I know a lot of you haven't tried this, but you can actually glitch outside this area through some maneuvering. And then you'll notice that there's actually a really weird dome kind of area, and it is not symmetrical at all. It's just a bunch of random blocks put together. Well, I guess that's because you're not actually supposed to look at it from outside. And I actually did a bit more research into this, and it turns out that this area is actually located 
located underneath where the Jerby boss spawns, which is really far away from where the mansion is. So now you know that the boss arena is not actually located at the mansion, but quite far away from it. Overall, pretty useless glitch, but it's pretty fun to look around this area. Next up, we got another secret location on the second C. And this area is actually located on the hill where the diamond boss spawns. If you walk exactly to this area, kind of behind the hill, facing the ocean, you'll notice that there's a wall here, but it's not really a wall. You can just walk straight through it. And a lot of you might already know this because this is where you actually upgrade your race to V3. But there's actually a second NPC that's located in this area. And this one is just called the doghouse. And a lot of you might be wondering, what does the doghouse actually do? Well, it does absolutely nothing except selling you a kilo fruit for 97 Robux. And in my opinion, and I think a lot of you will agree with me on this, a kilo fruit is not worth 97 Robux. And I'm pretty sure the devs just added this to troll the players. I mean, no one would actually buy a kilo fruit for 97 Robux, right? Next up is a secret location where you actually buy the superhuman fighting style from. And it's one that a lot of you might not know. So if you head over to the snow mountain that's on the second seat, and then you continue along this path until you reach the end of the mountain. Then all you gotta do is jump down here and then there's a secret entrance to a super secret place. And once you head in here, you will find the martial arts teacher. And from here, you can buy the superhuman fighting style which costs a total of 3 million belly. And one of the best fighting styles in the whole of Bloxroots. 